the traditional greeting. Recently, I lost a position similar to this one, and so I decided that I was going to train that. And if anyone's curious about um, how exactly I'm training this endgame position, well, the, the way that I'm doing it is I reached a position like what I want to train in Chessbase, the popular chess software these days, and I used a feature that's called Play Out Against Fritz, which is possible since I have a Chessbase online account. So it basically takes the position from Chessbase, opens it in a browser, I'm using Chrome, and it allows me to play against an engine that runs in the browser. So it doesn't require any um, standalone program like um, the basic Fritz um, to actually play. People who use Chessbase might be aware that Chessbase is not a playing software, which is one of its main limitations, but luckily there are lots of other things that are um, capable of playing a game, including this uh, Fritz Online tool, which I find very useful and affordable. So um, this is not exactly the position that I had um, as the black side defending against uh, Rook and Bishop. And so the way that I picked this is I did a little bit of research and I found a game played between Saks and Kovacevic back in 1982 that ended as a draw. So I know this is a, a theoretically drawn position. There, there are some positions with Rook and Bishop versus Rook that are not drawn because it's already just too late, but um, this is not one of those. And so my goal is to play this position against the computer uh, many times until I develop some good intuition for this sort of position so that I don't blunder in time pressure again in a theoretically drawn position against a GM. So, I guess we'll get started. This is not exactly a how-to video, it's mostly just like I wanted to do this anyway, and I figured I may as well um, show it to everyone. So, I'm setting the level to the highest difficulty since it's a theoretically drawn endgame. For training different kinds of positions, I would recommend that people sometimes use the lower settings. Um, in Fritz Online, you can set it to beginner where it plays like a complete patzer, or amateur, which is like maybe an average strength of player, like a 1500 or something. Um, then there's club player, which I think is probably corresponding about to maybe 1800 in FIDE or something like that. Um, and then there's master, which is like a 2200 player. And finally grandmaster, which is just the strongest computer. So if a position is a theoretical draw, I want to train to obtain the draw against the best play. So that's why I use the maximum strength. But to train like a middle game position or something, it just doesn't seem reasonable to use such a strong computer. Um, this one, all right, it's white to play, so I'm going to force them to make a move. There are some settings off screen that you guys can't see. I didn't want you guys to have to look at a whole lot of stuff that's not important, but one of the things you can do is make the computer move to kick off your training. So the computer here is going to play a move. I'm playing the black side, the dark side. And let's see what it does. Usually for the Grandmaster level computer, it takes some time. Hey, why is it saying half right away? It should be making a move. Sometimes this thing's finicky. said make a move right. I think the reason that I said half half is it consulted a table base and assumed that I would want to take the draw something like that all right now it's going in a position like this checking the king is usually very effective because this white king is blocking all of those squares. I don't know why I can't um, draw arrows here. Maybe I need to try harder. Oh yeah, there we go. So the king is blocking all of these. Can't highlight squares either. Hmm. Anyway, I guess I'm still learning the ropes a little bit. So now I need to put up some kind of staunch resistance. 
Going towards the corner seems ill-advised. I'd like to stay as flexible as possible. And avoiding checks is usually good, so I'll try to keep it on dark. Oh, really? Saying it's a draw again? It's annoying. I guess I have to just keep telling it to move, even though it's a draw. It's kind of frustrating, though. I wonder if there's some settings like no draws. All right, so they played rook c2. Hopefully the computer will at least put up some good resistance. Now I guess I have to just wait like this. Oh, really? It's so pesky. How do I... All right, I have an idea. Maybe if I delete all the previous moves from this position. This is interesting. All right. Now let's see if it'll keep playing. Yes, we know it's a theoretical draw, but we're, the goal is to be able to prove it against the hardest computer. So let's see. All right. Finally, it's playing. So I'll just put up some resistance, I guess. There's this thing called Hoimas that they use in um, chess base where when you click on a piece it'll highlight all the places it can go and it'll give some superficial evaluation of how good those places are. Um, so if you plan on training using that, which I will just for the purpose of this video, then you need to have the right mindset because if you just keep blindly playing whatever gets highlighted in green or whatever color seems like it's a good move, then you're not really going to learn very effectively. So I think whenever you are about to move, you should not click and hover. Like for example, if I know I want to move my king and I click like this, if one of these squares was red, it would indicate that that's a bad move. And it would be kind of cheating yourself out of a learning opportunity if you make a decision after seeing what all the colors are, because you have some confirmation bias. So my recommendation would be to decide for sure what move you're going to play. And if you're about to play and you see it's bad, you calculate and figure out why it's bad. And if you can't figure it out after giving it your best effort, then you play it and see what the computer does. And that's probably the most effective way to train um, using this. Okay, so they played king d5. I guess I'll play something like this. If this doesn't put up some kind of good offensive. I'm going to be really annoyed. <laughs> Sometimes computers are dopey in drawn positions. They don't try hard like a real grandmaster would. Bishop c2 looks like a good move. Yeah, and it's played it. Because um, the idea is that in order to win here, you have to probably play a move like bishop e4 to get your king closer. You need to cut off the rook and bring your king behind the bishop. And if you can do this over and over again, you can force the black king to the edge of the board, even though they have a rook. So that's the concept.